Hey, 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 happy Thursday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang Dispatch, presented by, amazingly enough, thegaminggang.com, which I happen to be the Grand Poobah. So welcome aboard. If this is your first time visiting, kick back, relax. Not anything serious going on right now, nor usually ever. So it's certainly not rocket surgery taking place. We're just hanging out, talking about the latest in tabletop gaming news. Every once in a while, we'll talk a little PC gaming, which we shall tonight. And on occasion, pop culture will rear its head. But for the most part, we're just talking about tabletop gaming news. Of course, if you are a constant viewer, a longtime subscriber, Thanks for joining me once again. It is Thursday, January 21st, 2021. This is live stream number 608. Yeah, six hundred more than 600 live streams. I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway, do you want to mention if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't yet. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. I'll not only let you know when the Dispatch streams live, Monday through Thursday nights, right here on YouTube. I'll also let you know when I upload other videos, such as tomorrow's review of Basic Fantasy 3rd Edition mm -hmm, from basicfantasy.org. I think that's who it is. I don't think they really have a company name. I think it's just basicfantasy.org. So stay tuned for that. Of course, if you missed it, check out my review for Apocalypse Road, which uh, I reviewed and uh, put that up yesterday, last night. It's back up on the shelf. Bing, right there. That's why I'm, I'm not holding it up. Anyway, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Of course, this is a live stream. That means there's chat available here on YouTube. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. But if you'd like to say howdy, or maybe you got a question, a comment, by all means, chime in. I will do my best to respond. Sometimes chat zips by pretty quickly. So, so far, first out the gate tonight was a gray day saying hello. The Madman is back following a Wednesday night of gaming. We missed the Madman yesterday. Clint Gibson is also in the house. So, very cool. Let's uh, get chat rocking and rolling. I got a good amount of news tonight. I've got an eclectic mix of news as well. We're going to jump into that. Great A mentions that uh, the Pathfinder for uh, Savage Worlds Kickstarter is at $220,000. million. dollars. Two twenty k. That is uh, that's pretty sweet. I got to be honest. I'd have thought they'd have been a little further along than that. I know. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I feel like if I got. $2,200 in a Kickstarter, I'd be like, yeah. So what am I talking about? $220,000 be like, oh, poo-poo. Oh, oh. Mm, oh, you guys are stinking it up. Anyway, John Vogel has joined us in chat. Victor Redis, Redis, 
taking a stab in the dark, has joined us as well. I believe this is, uh, I'm sorry, it's Vidor. For some reason, what's going on with these glasses tonight, Jeff? Just sit here squinting like Flaming Huron wants me to do. Uh, can't read anything on the teleprompter. It's some game for people, I guess. Costs you money to buy it. Tonight is the last night that uh, you will see me in glasses for a while. Anyway, hello, Viter. Welcome aboard. Viter's asking, uh, what's my favorite role-playing game? Or maybe they're asking everybody in chat what their favorite role-playing games are at the moment. So we will uh, we will talk about that. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about that after the news. Uh, so it's Viter spelled like Victor without the K. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, cor correctly. So I can't see, I can't speak. <laughs> I'll just sit there and grunt through the show. <laughs> Game. <laughs> there was a famous director in Hollywood, King Vidor. Good one there. Kabuki Kid has arrived in chat. She's like, oh, Magoo, you've done it again. Sorry, I don't do a very good Jim Backus voice. So, Adrede's pointing out that there is a play test tonight of the Pathfinder for Savage Worlds. It's over on Twitch. All of a sudden, everybody just <laughs> tunes out. They're like, gone. Like the hell with Jeff. I can, we can watch this crap anytime, man. You know, the funny thing is, people ask why I don't stream on Twitch. For one, it's 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 a different clientele. For one, which yeah, no, that's okay. Uh, seven p.m. Eastern, so it's been going for about an hour because it is seven o'clock Central Time right now. It's a little after seven. But anyway, the reason reason I don't really stream on Twitch is because they don't really save your streams. They save them for a couple of weeks, and then that's it. So to me, it's kind of I don't know. Plus, it was uh, very, very odd. Because the first first week or so that I was doing the live stream, now that's a ways back. I was on Twitch. I was on Twitch and YouTube. And uh, I, I had a chat that I, I could have people from both platforms in the same chat. And uh, it was uh, some, some very weird, <laughs> very, very uh, strange kind of... Uh, Encounters. Anyway, eh, you know, it's I'm probably I'm just too old for Twitch. I'm just too old for Twitch. So Mel Winnius from York has arrived in chat with us as well. So great Ace said two monitors, two streams. Two, two, two mints in one. Hey, my buddy Scott Weagle, my high school friend Scott is arrived in chat with us as well. Very cool. Got a good chat kicking off already. Very nice. Very nice. Let's jump on into the news. Then we'll talk a little bit about, uh, we'll talk about a couple of things. We can discuss my favorite RPG at the moment. It, it hasn't really changed. So, but I, I can't point that out if uh, Vidor is uh, interested. And so Great Ace says, don't cross the streams. Yes. Unless you're making a deal in ancient Japan, then you would. But uh, anyway, I was going to say uh, there's something else I wanted to mention about uh, Fun Again Games. I'm sure, quite a few of you probably run across that. So I had uh, I had tweeted something that I've gotten uh, a few DMs about. Strangely enough, I, I didn't think it was that big a deal that I mentioned it anyway. Let's jump on into the news. We'll tackle the rest of that as we go. Because this April is going to see the release of a new tile laying game from Deep Print Games and Capstone Games. I've got the skinny on Juicy Fruits. And we are not talking about the gum because that's a singular, not a plural. You have a small island paradise where you grow delicious fruit. And you want to supply ships with fruit and add businesses to your island so that your place is better than everyone else's. Your turn in Juicy Fruits works like this. 
First, you slide one of your fruit collector tokens, the number of unblocked spaces, and collect that many fruits of your token's type. Banana, orange, lime, pomegranate, or mangosteen. Not familiar with mangosteen. Let's <laughs> start talking about mangoes. Then you may either fulfill the order of a ship on your shores or claim a business from a shared display and place it onto your island or do nothing. Clever planning and timing is vital because until you supply the ships on your shores, they block valuable island space, which could be used to collect more fruit. But if you concentrate too much on the ships, the most promising businesses may get snatched up by your opponents. Also, the sooner businesses are claimed, the quicker the game might end. For each play, Juicy Fruits poses new puzzles of how to move your tokens efficiently and how to balance clearing your island with claiming businesses. This game also includes an additional Juice Factory mode and four modes of solo play. Juicy Fruits is for one to four players ages eight and up. It plays in around 20 to 30 minutes. It's going to carry an MSRP of $39.95 when it hits stores in April. Do you want to point out, this is arriving in the United States by way of Capstone Games. I am sharing the back image from the Pegasus Spiel release because otherwise all I would have to show you is a 3D render of the box. <laughs> so this could be kind of fun. I like how it's uh, it's got various different modes of play. So that is something that I am certainly interesting uh, interested in as well. So there's discussion going on about people's favorite role-playing games. I'll toss out mine. I think everybody knows who watches the show regularly. My favorite role-playing game is Call of Cthulhu always has been, always will be, unless something really blows my mind. Now, that's not to say that I don't like other role-playing games as well. It's just Call of Cthulhu's my go-to game. Moving right along, our next news piece, Hitting Stores, is uh, coming soon, I should say, is Adventure Tactics, Dominan's Tower. And here are the details from Letterman Games. Adventure Tactics Dominan's Tower is an encounter-based, campaign-driven, cooperative tactical combat game. Begin your journey as one of five basic classes and battle your way through a branching campaign where you choose your own path in an attempt to overthrow the evil Queen Dominan. I think. <laughs> With each encounter, you'll level up and unlock over 15 elite classes adding new actions, equipment, and abilities. Will your team find the right combination of classes and powers in time to stop the evil Queen Dominan? Let your adventure begin. You'll be able to customize your character through 20 plus unique classes. Now this successfully kickstarted and there's a lot more to this game than I am sharing here image wise information wise there is not so what i'm going to do is i am going to share the kickstarter video but it has music that will flag me for a copyright so what i'm going to do here is just simply play the video without any music but i'm also going to leave my mic open so I'll just kind of kid around. <laughs> I'll make comments about the video or what have you. But I do want to share a little more about this game than what you're, what you're basically seeing in these five images. So let me grab a quick sip here. Kabuki Kids rolling out Metamorphosis Alpha Gamma World. Oh, yeah. Little Traveler. We were just talking about a new Traveler release yesterday. All right, so let's swing on over to this video. All right, so um, so we're going to get to see some of the some of the artwork, some of the characters. I don't know. It's like, that's a nun. It's kind of like, okay, we got this nun. There's the evil queen. Boo, boo, hiss, boo, boo. And then this looks, oh, look, it's baby Jesus. 
<laughs> Baby Jesus is in the game. I don't know why. Aha, here's our adventurers. Ooh, and there's the tower because it is Dominan's Tower. That is part of the title of the game. Ta da! There you go. Adventure Tactics, Dominance Tower. So I, I do believe that there's also an addition that includes miniatures. Now, I don't know if that was necessarily a like uh, like Kickstarter exclusive or not. There you go. There's the team. They're gonna they're gonna beat on some goblins there. So here they're gonna show it looks like this is how you kind of level up as you're playing. So you unlock some new abilities as well. There we go. There's the nun again. Who's actually the Pope disguised as a nun who is really a witch disguised as a nun who is, I don't know, <laughs> a nun. Oh, who's really a, a swordswoman. There you go. So, uh, there was that. I don't know what that's supposed to be worth. Where they're wearing like this big necklace and that. There we have it. Adventure Tactics, Dominance Tower. See, there you go. There are those miniatures. I think they're only the heroes, though, that were available for the um, for the for the game itself. And once again, I think that might have been a uh, an exclusive to Kickstarter. I don't know. So the Madman is wondering about the quality of the standees. They look to be a bit bit thicker. I don't know. I don't know. Flaming Heron has joined us. It's like Jeff's just becoming the new voiceover person. No, in case you just had missed the, the intro to that. I don't, there isn't a lot of, of like, like written information about this game. Although it does look like it's kind of a cool game. It looks like a, like a tactical, you know, RPG. So, uh, Kabuki Kid says, art is nice, but I'm not in love with this style for fantasy art. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from as well. As well. I, I, I don't like a lot of, I don't like a lot of cartoonish, uh, I don't want to say like manga or anime influence, because I don't not necessarily say that's the influence to this artwork. This artwork's a little more cartoon-inspired, animation-inspired. But yeah, it, eh, I mean, the artwork's okay. So, let me hear it says, not everyone's with anime. Kabuki Kid says, yeah, cartoony isn't fantasy to me. Yeah, well, I do have to point out that uh, this game, Adventure Tactics, Dominance Tower, is for one to five players. It's for ages 13 and up, plays in about 45 to 60 minutes. It's going to carry an MSRP of $90. For those $90, I would hope that we would see those minis for your heroes. Uh, this is going to arrive on February 10th. I do believe there are some some uh, expansions as well. I think there's some other hero decks that are, are, are available as well. I uh, Like I said, there's not a ton of information about the game. There's, you know, there's images and stuff like that, but... So great, he says ninety dollars, and Kabuki Kid says game might be great though. Who knows? Well, it's Letterman Games. Uh, I got to be honest; I don't think I've ever played one of their releases. I think at some point they were looking to have me do some reviews, and then n nothing happened. But all right. So as I mentioned in today's open, we are going to talk a little PC gaming because. The latest free PC game has arrived over at the Epic Game Store. This week, it's Galactic Civilizations 3 from Stardock Entertainment. Here are the details. What if one day humans woke up to find that they weren't alone in the galaxy? Oh, yeah, I think we would crack up pretty good. They make their way into space and discover other alien civilizations with their own histories and motivations looking to make a name for themselves. Choose your race, human, drunken, Altarian, and so many more. Lead your civilization into a golden age in one of the largest 4X strategy games ever made. Research new technology, design starships, and colonize new worlds as you face threats and conquer challenges from new and mysterious sources. Negotiate trade and treaties, wage wars, spy on your enemies, 
and promote outstanding citizens. And when you've finished that, play again as one of the many included alien civilizations, each with its own history, technology tree, chip components, and more. Galactic Civilizations 3 now bundles in the Crusade and Ret Retribution expansions, plus the mega events add-on content for an even greater gameplay experience. Join the ranks of Galactic Leaders today and answer the question, how will you rule your galaxy? It's never the same game twice. Each new game offers an array of options as you set it up. Choose your map size, abundance of planets and resources, frequency of events, and more for a unique play experience every time. Galactic Civilizations 3 also removes linear victory conditions and offers you multiple objectives that you can choose to pursue in order to win, such as military conquest, cultural domination, technological ascension, or political alliances. The new multiplayer capabilities also allow you to expand your challenges and fights beyond an AI in order to face off against fellow players. All of this topped with a rich and in-depth custom ship designer ensure an immersive and exciting experience as you decide how to rule your galaxy. Let's take a peek at the launch video so you can get a better idea of Galactic Civilizations 3 if you aren't familiar with it. And no, there will not be any Jeff voiceover for this either. <laughs> you claim humanity causes the destruction of the galaxy. How can this be? Earth is surrounded by an alien lie in ruins, their worlds ravaged. I don't see how we can be the great threat in the universe. There is a crusade coming. A crusade led by humans. And with it, the end of all things. Galactic Civilizations 3 is available absolutely free through 10 a.m. Central Time, January 28th. If you have not played Galactic Civilizations, definitely check this out. This has been, this is from Stardock Entertainment. They've been around for quite a long time. This is one of their only games that they actually do. And, um... It's just overflowing with stuff. But a great ace pointing out that they really don't have time for, for a Galactic Civilization game. Yes, and this one does take a lot of time. More so than, uh, yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. All right, Kabuki kid. Um, Melwenia says, yeah, it's Stardock, so be prepared for a lot of DLCs. There are a few. And they are on sale. Well, this is free over at the Epic Game Store. So, but uh, it's actually a, a pretty good game. I have not played it for a while. It came out, I think, if I rem remember correctly, 2015, 2016, sometime around there. Um, I am a big fan of Stellaris, and this is a little like Stellaris. Um, but even more crunch, to be honest. Even more crunch. I don't know if there's if it's got more DLC, 
than Stellaris, but it does have a bit more, uh, in my opinion at least, uh, a higher learning curve than Stellaris. All right, let's talk about some role-playing game news because a new source book has been announced by Paizo for Pathfinder. It's going to be coming this October. Here's the skinny about Pathfinder guns and gears. Gear up and throw down. When sword and spell just won't be enough to win the day, it's time to power up your game with clockwork gears, lightning coils, and black powder. Guns and Gears, the latest hardcover rulebook for the Pathfinder role-playing game, second edition, brings the excitement of firearms and fantasy technology to your tabletop. Unravel the secrets of clockworks with the new inventor class, or blow away your opposition as a firearm-wielding gunslinger. In addition to new classes, a plethora of archetypes, backgrounds, vehicles, siege onions, engines. Yes, there's siege onions. My God, the castle would have, the castle would have held if you hadn't unleashed those siege onions on us. Ay, ay, ay. Siege engines, gadgets, and the new automaton ancestry are all ready to expand your game with options for battlefields large and small. Guns and Gears will feature two new classes. The Clever Inventor and the Sharp Shooting Gunslinger. Automaton ancestry for players who want to play a customizable construct. Firearms of all stripes, from the simple and effective flintlock pistol to versatile gun blades. Dozens of new archetypes, scores of new gadgets and vehicles, siege engines, not onions, and accompanying rules. A gazetteer of Galarian revealing how firearms and technology fit into the age of lost omens, including a look at the technology of the continents of Arcadia and Tianji, or Tianjia, and never before revealed secrets of the rough and tumble, gritty city of Elkenstar. Yeah, I like my cities rough and tumble and gritty. Pathfinder Guns and Gears will arrive in October, carrying an MSRP of $49.99. Cool, 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 cool. So I have to ask, uh, in chat, feel free to chime in. If uh, you're watching after the fact, by all means, feel free to comment in the comment section. If you play or run fantasy role-playing games, do you like firearms in them? Hmm. I know uh, there are folks out there, especially like in the like old school Renaissance, who uh, use the Lamentations of the Flame Princess rules because they have firearms in them. Uh, although uh, it, it takes it's it's a un, it's a unique sell, I guess we'll say, for that game. Although, to be honest, I mean, the rules themselves, you can get them without art. And uh, I gotta be honest, I mean, for like OSR rules, the rules are actually pretty decent. It's just some of the adventures and things like that <laughs> might not be your taste. Anyway, um, so I'm just kind of curious. Uh, I have actually never really... I, I have had flintlocks on occasion in games, but that's about as powerful as it would get. And it basically fairly realistic where it's like, you're going to get a, a one shot off and then you're, you're not going to have time to reload in a combat that would not, not be taking place. So Melanius is talking about how no one can beat paradox. Talking about Stellaris before. Although the guys that made uh, Talisman surely tried. Uh, yeah, so Flaming Heron says, yeah, Talisman's been out for a while. And at least the DLC isn't required. So I, I don't know. I actually haven't played it. So Great A says, uh, haven't run guns in fantasy. Kabuki Kid says, I did play a D&D &D game where we played as sort of musketeer characters with guns, blunderbuss and whatnot. It was fun, but I'm not big on guns in fantasy. 
Yeah, I'm I'm not necessarily either. Just uh I don't know. Just uh just my thing. Now you know what gunpowder in that? Maybe not so much. I don't have really an issue with that. But uh yeah, which strangely enough, if they know how to make gunpowder, they, they would know how to make projectile weapons that use gunpowder powder. Ten L. All right. Flaming Heron says, don't mind guns and fantasy games because most times they're slow to load. That is very true. All right. Next news piece. There is a starter set for Symborum that's been announced, and it is right on the horizon. I've got the, stoop, the scoop from Free League Publishing. The long-lost artifact known as the Rod of Light and Darkness had a touch that could breathe life into dead things or steal it away from that which lived. In this very moment, the location of the artifact has been revealed, an opportunity that cannot be ignored. But it rests in an area known to treasure hunters as a place where lightning rain burns flesh and shatters dreams. Brave adventurer, this is your moment. Free League Publishing today, well, actually it wasn't today, it was a couple days ago, Announced the starter set for their praised dark fantasy tabletop role-playing game, Symborum, that will release on February 16th. The Symborum starter set, Treasure Hunts in Devokar, is the perfect entry point to venture deep into the lush world and offers treasure hunts and expeditions in the mysterious forest. The set contains everything needed to start playing, including two ready-made adventure sites, Guidelines for creating treasure hunt adventures, a 64 page rule book, a 64 page adventure compendium, a set of dice, two double sided full color maps, and six printed character sheets with pre made player characters. The starter set includes a 64 page illustrated rule book, which introduces the game's easy to learn and highly flexible rule set, along with its dark and mysterious game world. The 64-page adventure compendium, which includes the two adventure locations for your players to explore, and rules for designing adventures of your own. The Symborum Bright Devakar dice set is all the dice you'll need for combat, problem solving, and social challenges, as well as a double-sided map with one side depicting the game setting at large and the other the treasure hunter's town of Thistlehold. There's a second double-sided map that shows the main locations of the two pre-made adventure landscapes meant to be used at the gaming table, as well as the six character sheets describing five ready-made player characters and one mystical companion for you to play. The starter set's going to carry an MSRP of $39.99 when it arrives in stores on February 16th. Cool! Very nice! Very nice. I have reached out to my contact over at Free League Publishing. See if we can maybe get a review copy. See if we can take a peek at it. I just recently reviewed the core book for Symborum. And I like it. I I I have to say, I think it's it's a pretty cool game. And I was very surprised that it did not utilize the traditional game engine that we see in a bunch of the other free league pu publishing games, as well as it's going to be Twilight 2000's kind of a driving force, and that's their um, year one engine. So, or no, I'm sorry, it's year zero engine. Why do I always say year one? It's year zero, because it's from Mutant Year Zero. <laughs> yay. yay. So Great A says they're really targeting the English audience with Symborum right now. They've got more 5E stuff coming as well. Yeah, I think Tomas over at Free League did an interview. Great A's talking about uh, having seen an interview about this. Yeah, I think, I think it was Tomas who was doing that. Um, Great A says they mentioned this is the original title developed by the founders, so they felt it's important to make it more accessible. I mentioned in my review for the core book that 
Symborum is one of the better kind of, um, well, I guess I would say it's it's one of the more supported role-playing games from Free League. In fact, I think even counting the Mutant lineup, no, maybe not. I think Mutants got the most, but I think this is probably like second because it there are quite a few source books as well as uh, adventure books for Symborum. So who knows? We might get a chance to see this. I'm hoping maybe to get a, an opportunity to see some of the other releases that came out for Symborum as well, because I do believe that, uh, as Agrede is mentioning, I think Free League really does want to kind of really expose this to more people. So uh, Agrede says they mentioned they didn't have any plans to print any more Swedish language releases. Huh, that's interesting. At all from Free League? <laughs> Or just for Symborum. Because the, one of the interesting things, too, is Free League has changed their Twitter handle, their Twitter name. It used to be Free uh, Free Ligon. Now it's Free League Pub. And they also now have FreeLeaguePublishing.com, which, of course, forwards over to the Free Ligon website. But they didn't have that before. That was uh, that's a a recent acquisition. Somebody must have owned it and let the uh, let let the uh, registration on it expire. All right, my final news piece: Tolis Monty Cook's City by the Spire RPG supplement is now available as a PDF pre-order over at Drive Through RPG. I've got the dope. Explore a sprawling fantasy setting presented in amazing detail and steeped in lore and atmosphere. Delve into the extensive dungeons beneath the city streets. And maybe when you're ready, ascend the spire that looms overhead, the heart of an ancient and restless evil. In Tolis, the supernatural is expected and treachery lies around every corner. Or is it that the supernatural lies around every corner and treachery is expected? Either way, the city of Tolis abounds with danger, magic, intrigue, and above all, adventure. The original version of Tolis was released in 2006 for 3rd edition and the D20 system. It was met with critical acclaim and intense praise for its depth of detail, breadth, and volume of material, ease of use, staggeringly imaginative content, and groundbreaking production values. It sold out immediately, and physical copies remain a highly sought-after collector's item. At the time, Tolis was the most ambitious single-author RPG project ever, and that's still the case. A single author means a single vision. Tolis, Monty Cook's City by the Spire, was derived from Monty's personal campaign, which ran for nearly a decade and through the development in early days of 3rd edition. The players, two groups playing simultaneously on different nights of the week, were all co-workers of Monty's, the designers, developers, editors, and marketers of 3rd edition Dungeons & Dragons. With Monty at the helm and so many inventive players driving the events of his game, the campaign showcased the most exciting and creative ways the game could be used to build a vivid, exciting, and unique fantasy world. Tolis, Monte Cook City by the Spire, is 672 pages. Let that sink in. <laughs> in addition to the handouts, maps, and props, and roughly 300 pages of an additional bonus content, the art, maps, and production values are astounding in their breadth and consistent in their top-notch quality. But that's not all. That amount of content in a conventional book would be a challenge to manage. So Tolis is carefully organized and has dozens of thoughtful features to make it easier to use than a typically sized game book. Multiple indices and glossaries help you manage all the content. The margins contain page references linking to more information about what you're reading or the map for the location being described. 
Quick to use tables and summaries indicate what's in each district, who lives there, and even the mood of the place. You'll never be caught flat-footed when the PCs stop a random person on the street for a quick chat or to murder them if your party is a bunch of murder hobos. Throughout, careful design and thoughtful layout make everything easy to digest, manage, and access. And the unique presentation doesn't just make it easy to use. It also imparts flavor to virtually every page in every district, location, NPC, faction, and mystery. The 1,000-page PDF, I assume it's multiple PDFs. <laughs> I'm thinking it's just going to be one big PDF. It's going to release in April through Drive-Thru RPG. You can pre-order. It's, it's both, both editions, actually. It's 5e and Cypher System together. So you can put in a pre-order right now for $59 and 99 cents, so, which is kind of funny. Cause if you think about it, we were just talking about the latest traveler release yesterday and how it's what $30 for the P well, it's $29.99 over at drive through RPG. And it's hundred and I think it was 164 pages. If I remember right. So, this is like completely opposite. It's like a thousand pages of content and it's $59.99. So the man man says that a friend of his actually has the original book and it's huge. <laughs> that great. He says it's probably better as a TV series and uh, is wondering how long it took for Monty to put that together. Because he doesn't seem to have uh, that much time on his hands. He seems to be busy. So Flaming Heron points out, yes, Invisible Sun is also enormous volume by Monty Cook Games. It is. And I got to be honest, I have absolutely no idea how popular Invisible Sun is. None whatsoever. I have no clue. But I got to say, that looks very cool. And of course... Speaking of drive through RPG, the Gaming Gang and, of course, the Dispatch are affiliated with the One Bookshelf sites. So if you are going to go visit, say, drive through RPG and maybe take a look at Tolis, because I got to say, there's way more info about this on drive through RPG. I was not going to spend 20 minutes reading it to you. But if you happen to pop over there, please stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads. That way, if you happen to make a purchase, I get a little portion of that sale. And all those nickels, dimes, and quarters really do add up. And they do help keep the Gaming Gang website around. And there are a lot of people who actually do use those links. So really, really appreciate it very much. All right, so that's it for the news tonight. But yeah, I'm kind of curious about Invisible Sun. I got to see it a little bit. I interviewed Monty Cook once. Uh, it was at the next to last Gen Con that I was at. And in fact, I was looking to try to follow up with him and interview him again the next time. And uh, the PR person from Monty Cook Games kind of just gave me a runaround. And... Uh, I finally was, uh, they, cause they were texting me back and forth. The, the PR person I was like, Oh yeah. Uh, be over by their booth at whatever time. And I'd swing on over there to talk to her to try to set up the interview and I'd swing over there and then she wouldn't be there. And then I would text her and say, well, you know, I I'm, I'm at your, I'm at the booth. And then it'd be like an hour later. She'd get back to me. Oh, well, you know, Try tomorrow at blah, blah, blah time. And it finally, I was like, forget it. <laughs> it's like, and it, it had absolutely nothing to do with, with Monty or uh, Shannon Germain. Or, I mean, the other people I've dealt with from uh, Monty Cook Games have always been really nice. I mean, I, it, I, I chat with them a little bit. I, I haven't really sat down and gotten, you know, to really know them or anything. But uh, I was kind of like, does this 
does this person not realize that, you know, this is Gen Con? There are loads of other companies that I can be talking to. I don't have to keep wasting my time walking over here. Anyway, so I was going to tell you about something that I had tweeted out today. So because um, if you have not been following the goings on with Fun Again Games, I guess I don't want to rehash it. But let's just say that uh, the CEO, the owner, basically, of Fun Again Games had uh, said some really bizarre stuff in a back and forth. Uh, and and pretty misogynistic nonsense and, and stuff like that. And then came across as like being so dense that they didn't understand what they said was really, you know, offensive. So anyway, so I had, um, I tweeted out, you know, people don't realize this, but early on with the gaming gang, I almost ended up being sponsored buy fun again games because I had the opportunity. I actually met the original founder who we're not going to get into a bunch of details about, um, and actually had gamed a few times at their house. And it's funny. I, I personally did not like him. <laughs> so I didn't, I was like, nah, nah forget it. So anyway, so I have interviewed the CEO for Fun Again because he had taken over uh, a game company and I was at Gamma in Vegas back when I was in Vegas and he was one of the interviews that I did. I mean, he seemed like he was all right with me. So anyway, so I also have had a, a contributor who ended up working for Fun Again and the original owner was gone. He, he, he was completely out of it, sold it off, everything else. And I had, I had actually considered reaching out to see if they wanted to possibly work on some sort of a sponsorship. And I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> So anyway, so I just I just tweeted that out. I mean, it wasn't like as detailed as that. I just basically tweeted and said, you know, at one point years ago, the gaming gang was almost sponsored by Fun Again Games, and I didn't like the original owner, so I nixed that. And then recently, I had a friend work for Fun Again, and I had thought about reaching out. I didn't, and I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> And I got some DMs from people saying I was I was being an asshole. I was like, I'm not the guy who shot his mouth off and looked like a real creeper online. All I'm saying is, hey, you know what? I guess it's a good thing I don't have that association. Because, you know, you'll get tarred with the same brush. Even if, uh, you know, even if you're not really associated with them at all. All right. So there is uh, some discussion. So the original Tolis hardcover is 150 bucks. Probably secondary market, of course. And uh, the man man points out, yes, the Pathfinder for Savage Worlds Kickstarter has tapped him out. So Flaming Heron says, talking about Invisible Sun, I think I think Flaming Heron's trying to say it's not terrible, that it was something uh, they were interested. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So they were interested in it, but the, once again, yeah, that was super pricey. E and it, I think it was about a year. Maybe I'm wrong. I think it was about a year before Invisible Sun became available as PDF. And then it's all like a bunch of, it's a lot of cards. I mean, it's hundreds of cards. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine 
using that as, as, as in PDF. Because by the time you print all those cards out. So once again, I, I am not real up on Invisible Sun. So, oh, so Great A says, no, it's not the original hardback. This is a new one that's over on the Monty Cook Games website. It's 150 bucks. Uh huh. Well, the thing is, I would, I don't think, I wouldn't think that that's the fifth edition. I don't know, because they're they're talking about this PDF won't arrive on Drive Through RPG until April. So, I would think that this is like a new edition. I don't know. I have no clue. But yeah, a thousand pages. That is, uh, that's a lot of content. That is. Tons and tons of content. All righty. So before I go, do want to also remind everybody if the Gaming Gang YouTube channel can hit 4,000 subscribers by January 31st, which I think right now we are 144 away so that's not terrible but if i can hit 4000 subscribers by the end of the month i will give away this copy of next war korea from gmt games of course if we hit 5000 subscribers by the end of this month i will give away a core set of first edition Dungeons and Dragons uh, core uh, core books. So the trio of books. So we're looking at the Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and Monster Manual. Those would all be with the Jeff Eastley artwork. And also, if uh, if I can hit six thousand subscribers by the end of next month, I am going to give away my alternate art copy of the upcoming D&D Candlekeep Mysteries book. So kind of cool. So a great A says the, the uh, I think it's pronounced Tolis. I'm not positive. I think it's Tolis. The 5e bundle is 250 bucks. 250 bucks. Holy cow. Yeah, that's pretty pricey. That is pretty pricey. All right, I guess PDF's probably going to be the way to go on that. Anyway, so do you want to point out we've got the three contests currently going, and we could get to the point where I can give away the next War Korea. It's not that crazy, not that far off. Of course, you can always help if you're on social media. By all means, share the gaming gang channel web address if you'd like so a great day says the fun again ceo is stepping down yes i know i retweeted that earlier on twitter as well so uh yeah so in essence the fun again employees have supposedly forced him to step down the ceo to step down and that he will not have anything to do with the uh, operations, the day-to-day -day operations of Fun Again anymore. Fun Again's weird in the first place because Fun Again suddenly was like, yeah, we're not doing online sales anymore. And that lasted for about a year. And then suddenly they were like, okay, well, we're back. We're going to do online sales again. And then they were buying up like distribution avenues. I don't know. So yes, so yes, he is stepping down. But here's the thing. If if you are one of these, one of these sorts of folks who are like, hey, you know what? I put my money where my mouth is. If you're still buying from fun again, he's still profiting from it. So he's the CEO. He's also the owner. So anyway. So a great day says, yeah, they're a distribution hub. They buy interest in product movement. Yep. And I think they still have two game stores in uh, Oregon. 
I think, didn't they have one in Eugene, another in Portland? Anyway. Once again, if you like this video, by all means, give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. I'll not only let you know when the Dispatch streams live right here on YouTube Monday through Thursday nights, but I'll also let you know when I upload other videos, such as tomorrow's review of Basic Fantasy from basicfantasy.org. Of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com. For all latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Those of you who hung out, thank you very much. I always appreciate you hanging out live with me so I don't feel like a complete goofball just blabbing on into a camera. But then again, I know there are a lot of people out there who don't have an opportunity to watch the stream live. I appreciate you watch after the fact, even if you're watching on MemberX. Thank you very much, everybody out there. Hopefully everybody enjoys the rest of their Thursday or Friday or whatever day it happens to be when you're watching this. I will be back on Monday. And of course, as I wrap up all my videos during this never-ending pandemic, that maybe we can start seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for maybe. Anyway, here's hoping all of you out there are being smart and staying safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, if you'd like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, by all means, click right here. And if you'd like to check out one of our recent live streams, click right up top. And if you want to roll the dice and see what the algorithm for YouTube recommends, click right here. And of course, thank you once again for watching. And gang, please stay safe and wear a mask.